with people French and Dutch, though talking English much, as he seen Martin in the sea. Oh, sweet Saint Martin's land, so bright by beach and strand, with sailors on the sea and harbors free, where the chains of mountains green, variously in sunlight sheen. Oh, I love my paradise, nature's beauty fairly nice. Oh, I love thy paradise, nature's beauty fairly nice. How pretty between a green flamboyant beaming gleam, all flowers red by sunlight set. Thy cows and sheep and goats in meadows or on roads, thy donkeys keen, can't I forget? It is our earnest prayer that our leaders, your leaders, use their position, presence, privilege, and power to shine lights in areas of hurt, especially where the disadvantage occupy, so that they will care for those whom no one else will care for, and see those who are often ignored. So dear God, even as we conclude this prayer, give strength, courage, and greater resolve to those you have placed in charge of us to make choices on the side of love and not hate, on the side of tolerance and not intolerance, on the side of justice and not injustice. So we conclude with the words of that hymn, O oh, so God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thus who have, thou who has brought us thus far on our way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hand. May we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. So we commit our council of ministers to you, O God. The blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with them now and forever. And we say, amen. and we say amen again. Amen. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cedric Peterson from the Ministry of General Affairs, specifically within the Department of Communication. On behalf of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Ministers of the Council, and the government apparatus, so I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to our Honorable Member of Parliament, Mr. Franz Richardson. We also have the Dutch representative of The Hague here in Phillipsburg, Mr. Chris Johnson. The management and board of the airport, Secretary Generals and department heads within government. The management and board of the harbor and of course the management and board of Telem. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is great and truly an honor to stand here before you as your master of ceremony um, and, and see such a healthy crowd that has come out to be a part of this celebration uh, that I would like to term a celebration because it's always a great thing when our government um, makes and takes an oath and can get to work and we are ushering in a brand new year of service and we are anxious to do so. To set the tone further for this evening, I would like to, at this time, invite our first, uh, actually our only speaker to address you this evening. So ladies and gentlemen, please extend a warm welcome to the Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable William Marlin.
fellow St. Martiners, residents of our beautiful island, colleagues in the Council of Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The new government that was just sworn in comes at a time when preparations for Christmas seem to overshadow everything else. In this season of joy and jubilation, it is with great humility and a somber sense of duty that I acknowledge the fact that the next four years will be full of challenges, not just for the new government that was sworn in earlier today, but for all the people of our island, St. Martin. I am, however, convinced that by the grace of God and with the contribution and support of everyone, we will prevail. Some of these challenges include cementing a culture of good governance as we pursue our vision of building a strong, virile, proud, healthy, and resilient nation. This requires that we cater to the needs of the people in an effective, transparent, fiscally sustainable, fair, and open manner that stresses accountability and that is sensitive and compassionate to one and all. For this to happen, we have to pay maximum attention to reviving our economy. We must create a climate that is conducive to responsible foreign investment, which recognizes that the best way to guarantee profit is to make the welfare of the people the piece of its plans while making sure that the environment is preserved as much as possible. What we cannot do, however, is turn our backs on well-meaning investors no matter where they may come from. This government will vigorously pursue an active public-private partnership which we consider necessary for establishing just and fair labor conditions, a partnership that is obviously critical to our economic development. Stability in government is what people voted for on September 26th. That is what this coalition intends to deliver to the very best of its ability. As we have seen through our recent efforts at electoral reform, it is very difficult to tackle the phenomenon of ship jumping legislatively. The most powerful antidote to that, in my humble view, lies with the people who should make it clear that ship jumpers will have to pay a heavy price at the polls. However, eradicating ship jumping in and of itself will not guarantee good governance or integrity in government. The American writer Frank Herbert once said, good governance never depends on laws, but upon the personal qualities of those who govern. I am convinced that the members of this Council of Ministers have those personal qualities that are necessary to ensure governance. You can therefore rest assured that this government will concentrate on doing the people's business without fear or favor. We know expectations are high but so are the strategic goals we have set for ourselves. We want to deliver a better standard of living for all the people of this island, from our youth to our senior citizens, from our professionals to unskilled workers, for our women and naturally for our men as well. We shall ignore no sector, we shall engage every group. For each of us to be able to benefit from the economic pie, we should first be able to contribute to baking that pie. Only then 
can we determine how big a pie we can have, how sweet it should taste, and how it will be divided among us? Sounds familiar, Minister of Finance. But what we cannot do is eat our pie and have it too. We must make sure that there will be enough to go round not only for us, but also for future generations. That is what sustainability is all about. But none of this will be possible without a sound financial management. That is why we have already begun to put our financial house in order under the leadership of our finance minister, Richard Gibson. For the first time, Parliament just a few days ago approved a balanced budget for 2017 and on schedule. And even the CFT has now admitted that we would end 2016 with a surplus. Financial discipline is what it took to achieve this. Such discipline is a prerequisite for sustainable development. In the face of decreasing income due, in part to a rather low tax compliance rate and high demands for increased government spending, it is clear that we need to readjust our thinking and particularly our modus operandi in order to become a better and more efficient organization. We intend to reform our tax regime, move more towards indirect taxes, and achieve increased tax compliance through a modernized tax administration and a simplified tax system, all of which would make additional taxes unnecessary for the already burdened taxpayer. Fellow St. Martiners, education is the key to the development of any nation. Education is the cornerstone of our governing program. This government will continue to strive to make quality education accessible, affordable, and meaningful from preschool to the tertiary level. We will promote lifelong learning and partner with the private sector to further develop our human resources in such a way that the labor market will, de will depend less on expatriates. We will focus on our youth with programs designed to prepare them not only for the wall of work, but also to position them as the true leaders of tomorrow. For us, nation, buildings, nation building begins with building up the character of our youth, instilling in them the time-tested morals and values that have made us survive as a people in spite of all the adversities we have had to endure, and grooming them to become well-rounded, healthy, productive, and creative adults, proud of their heritage, and ready and able to take their rightful place at home and on the larger world stage. I am, of course, aware that it is not easy to be a youth in today's world. The temptations are many, and the proper mentorship is rare. Youth unemployment and delinquency seem to go hand in hand. A quick look at a house of detention in Point Blanche shows that the system is failing our youth. We cannot build a nation where our young men and our young women are marginalized, where too many of them seem to have, seem to have been left behind with no hope for a brighter future. We will therefore design programs that will effectively address the various issues of our youth that our youth are facing with a vital input from youth organizations and other stakeholders. The St. Martin we are trying to build together has to rest on a foundation of public safety 
and security. The increase in criminal activity in recent times on our island is unacceptable, not just because we are a tourist island, but because it undermines the very fabric of our society. While this government will consider stiffer punishment for violent crimes, the most effective way of combating crime, we believe, is through educational and other preventative programs. It is a well-known fact, however, that the single most important challenge facing our law enforcement is the financial resources needed to upgrade its operations, strengthen the police force, and the customs and immigration, and modernizing the infrastructure of our justice chain. However, in spite of the financial constraints, we will not relent in our efforts to make St. Martin safe for all its inhabitants and its visitors. Fellow St. Martiners, health is wealth, so they say. A healthy people are usually a productive people. The health of a nation speaks volumes, not only about the present, but more importantly, about the future of that nation. Our individual health is generally a reflection of our lifestyle and eating habits. Each and every one of us has a personal responsibility in this regard. Nevertheless, as government, we will strive to provide affordable, accessible, and quality health care and universal coverage for the people through a national health insurance scheme. Similarly, we will improve the health care delivery system by making the St. Martin Medical Center into a modern, well-equipped, and properly staffed general hospital. All these strategic goals, details of which are contained in our governing program titled Stability for Prosperity, have been conceived within the context of socioeconomic and environmental sustainability. Tourism is well known, is the main pillar of our economy, and will remain so for the foreseeable future. Sustainable tourism development is, therefore, the only way forward for us if we want to maintain our position as one of the leading destinations in the Caribbean. St. Martin, as a tourist destination, is one island. Whatever happens on one side has repercussions on the other side. This makes it imperative for us to work together as we have always done in the past. Despite the recent increase in tension in our relations with Marigot, I want to state categorically that we in Phillipsburg will never, will never turn our backs on our brothers and sisters on French St. Martin. We seek constructive cooperation with authorities in the North based on mutual respect and will resist any attempt from outside or from within to sow the seeds of division among us as a people. Similarly, we look forward to working with the other countries in the Kingdom of the Netherlands for the upliftment of our people and in the interest of peace, solidarity, and respect for one another's culture and aspirations. Regionally, we will continue to seek ways to strengthen our ties with our Caribbean brothers and sisters in acknowledgement of the fact that the only difference between us is a boat stop. We support, we support the agenda of regional bodies like CARICOM and their efforts to bring our people together. And we will intensify our efforts to increase trade and travel between these islands. In conclusion, the core business of any government is to serve and represent its people 
in ways that would empower them and cater to their general welfare. That is why good governance is critical. Good governance usually leads to stability, although the reverse may not always be true. I must stress, however, that we all have great stakes in ensuring good governance. In fact, good governance, in fact, good governance is impossible unless every sector of society participates in it. In other words, good governance is not a matter to be left to politicians alone. The public, the media and civil society are also equally responsible for good governance. We in this new Council of Ministers consequently pledge to provide the people of St. Martin with the very least we can offer, and that is a stable government for the next four years based on integrity and the principles of good governance. I wish to I wish to end by thanking the three ministers who will not be returning. Minister Kirindongo, please come forward. <laughs> Minister Ingrid Iranya Arendel. <laughs> Mr. Angel Myers. We want to thank these three ministers who will not be returning to the Council of Ministers 2016-2020. But we want to, all of us, on behalf of the entire Council of Ministers, but I can also say on behalf of the people of St. Martin, thank you for your contributions you have made to the further development and growth of St. Martin over the past year. And we want to wish you Godspeed in your future endeavors. And finally, may I ask for your prayers and your support as we, all of us, embark on this journey together. God bless St. Martin and God bless all of us. I thank you. Our Minister of Education is also one of the ministers who will be returning. And it always gives me great pleasure to introduce our Minister of Education because like I oftentimes say, we go way back as both of us went to Leonard Connor School together in Cold Bay even though at one point in time I was a teacher and principal and Mrs. Jacobs was a student and later on became a teacher and principal as well. And now she is not only heading a school, she is heading education and has done a tremendous job and we look forward to her contributions in the next four years. The next minister has been responsible for health, has hit the ground kind of running and made sure that he put everything in place to ensure that we would get a new hospital. Things happen, and we all know that we are sort of in a state of limbo. But one of the things that he asked me after the election, he said, Prime Minister, I would really like to come back to finish my job. So I'm happy that he is back and to continue doing his job. 
Minister Amy Lee. Representing us in The Hague has been there, has been there for quite some time. I believe from in the days of the Netherlands Antilles, no? 2012, I thought she was there in the days of the Netherlands Antilles as deputy, but I was Mrs. Mavis Brooks. The minister plenipotentiary has started working at the cabinet in The Hague as the deputy minister plenipotentiary, and then she became the minister plenipotentiary, and this year she will be returning. She has brought a new dynamic, a new atmosphere, a new face to what we want to call the St. Martin House in The Hague. And she has opened the St. Martin House to all St. Martiners. And she surprised me one day when she said she converted one of the rooms downstairs into sort of a emergency shelter with strict rules and guidelines. Because too often, or not too often, but quite often, it happens that students run in some sort of a trouble and they run short and can't pay their rent. And it is not like out here in the good Caribbean and for sure not like here in St. Martin where we have people who owe the St. Martin Housing Development Foundation sometimes for so two years. In the Netherlands it is not possible. And when it's time to evict, you find your stuff on the curb. So Mrs. Doran York made sure she put a little emergency in place because even sometimes St. Martiners who go there to the doctor stay a little longer than they have to originally, run out of cash, run out of somewhere to stay, and not having a family to go to, they can find shelter in the St. Martin house. And that is her way of beginning the process of making the St. Martin home a home for all St. Martiners who are in the Netherlands. Put your hands together as we welcome <laughs> Mrs. Henrietta Doran York. We, at this point in time, cannot introduce the new minister of Tiat. The minister, candidate minister, still has some documents to finalize before the screening is completed.